Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Tuesday, the 28th day of November, year of our Lord, 2023. I do pray this finds you another cold day out there. Still in the 20s when I left, so maybe it's moderating, but it's supposed to by the end of the week. So if you're like me and don't have your Christmas lights out yet, there's still a chance. Uh, still, I'll have decorations out, but I might not get to the lights this year. We'll, we'll, we'll see. A lot going on. Anyway, uh, once again, I do pray this finds you well. We're, we're a little late. It's Tuesday, getting started, uh, confirmation, and then a uh, 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 few other things to take care of before uh, getting settled in here. But we are again going to read from Ecclesiastes tonight. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. I herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And once again, as I just mentioned, we are going to stay out of the daily lectionary and read from Ecclesiastes as we have the past several nights. Tonight we read chapter 5, which is verses 1 through 20. Guide your steps when you go to the house of God. To draw near, to listen, is better than to offer the sacrifice of fools, for they do not know that they are doing evil. Be not rash with your mouth, nor let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God, for God is in heaven, and you are on earth. Therefore let your words be few, for a dream comes with much busyness, and a fool's voice with many words. When you vow a vow to God, do not delay paying it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay what you vow. It is better that you should not vow than that you should vow and not pay. Let not your mouth lead you to sin, and do not say before the messenger that it was a mistake. Why should God be angry at your voice and destroy the work of your hands? For when dreams increase and words grow many, there is vanity. But God is the one you must fear. If you see in a province the oppression of the poor and the violation of justice and righteousness, do not be amazed at the matter. For the high official is watched by a higher, and yet there are higher ones over them. But this is gain for a land in every way, a king committed to cultivated fields. He who loves money will not be satisfied with money, nor he who loves wealth with his income. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they increase who eat them, and what advantage is their owner but to see them with his eyes? Sweet is the sleep of a laborer, whether he eats little or much, but the full stomach of the rich will not let him sleep. There is a grievous evil that I have seen under the sun. Riches were kept by their owner to his hurt, and those riches were lost in a bad venture. And he is father of a son, but he has nothing in his hand. As he came from his mother's womb, he shall go again naked as he came, and shall take nothing for his toil that he may carry away in his hand. This also is a grievous evil. Just as he came, so shall he go. And what gain is there to him who toils for the wind? Moreover, all these days he eats in darkness, and much vexation, and sickness, and anger. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil with which one toils under the sun the few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them, and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life, because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. And that is, that is the word of the Lord. And again, we see this recurring theme. First, you know, he talks about the mouth, and this is echoing Proverbs. Uh, he speaks a lot of it there. Uh, to draw near to listen is, to, is better than to offer the sacrifice of fools. They don't know that they are doing evil. Do not be rash with your mouth, or let your heart be hasty to utter a word before God. So keep your words few. 
Uh, it's easy for me to say as a pastor, you ask me for the weather, I'm going to give you a thousand words on the subject. Speaking is my vocation. But, you know, even then, you know, when I, when, when I think about like theological things, uh, I don't know everything. And I, I, don't, I'll, I certainly won't know everything in this life, you know, when we, when we close. And, and uh, we were talking about this at, uh, uh, I, don't know if it was book, I think it was book called last night. But, you know, we, we acknowledge that when you really study something and, you know, it's like the more you know, the less you know. You just realize how much you don't know. You have this vast, delicious study called Christian theology. That doesn't mean I don't have anything to say. It just means that, you know, you realize that, okay, we don't know this. We don't know the answers to this. Or I don't know the answers to this, so I'm not going to say anything. Because then you're going to sound like a fool. And you can actually lose credibility with people. And, and, um, there's, nothing, and there's so much mystery in the Bible you know, that there's nothing wrong with saying Mystery. I spend any time around me. Hear me, hear, hear me say that a lot. So, so let your words be few. And I'll, I'll offer this caution to lay people. Um, now this happens because of where we find ourselves in American Christianity. And we, we're, you know, and I'm go, we're going to go back. A, have to go back a couple, three hundred years in, in Christian history to really understand why we are where we're at now. We're not going to take the time to do that. Now. But because of this relatively modern Christian history and this thing crept in that crept in, pietism, and that leads to emotionalism, stuff like that, that people just think, you know, that the Spirit just is constantly whispering in their ear and telling them, you know, all the deep secrets of theology. And it Certainly, Scripture does not support that at all. Why do you think Scripture has pastors? We were just talking about that again this morning. Romans chapter ten. You know, unless pastors are sent, how are they going to know? You know, how you, the, how are they going to? Who's going to learn anything unless the pastors that are sent go and teach you? Those who are called to do so. But in our culture, you know, we we think, oh, God just speaks to me directly, and then people will stand in front of me and without blinking say, I hear you, pastor, but this is what I believe. This is what I, and, you know, look at that sign over, over my shoulder there. This is what I really feel like that somehow is the indicator. So I'm going to caution you, you know, don't do that. Uh, don't speak about what you don't know. And don't listen to those who are speaking about what they don't know. Again, I mentioned this a, a number of nights ago that we are in our culture also. If, if somebody appears successful, we think that they're the ones we need to listen to. Now, they may know a lot about a particular subject that makes them successful, uh, you know, fine. Uh, but often, you know, they, they want to opine about things they don't know anything about, uh, like theology, spirituality. I, I've seen it over and over again, uh, from Oprah to, to, to you name them. They're going to, Reba McIntyre, I remember reading many years ago that she was a, a a reincarnationist. I know she believes now, but back at that point, she's like, oh, you know, you're like, you're, you're reborn, you're reborn, you're reborn. Um, uh, not Christianity, you know, uh, and, and, you know, sure. You know, and it's interesting, though, that, okay, these people have these very misguided opinions on that, but they're also very influential, and people believe them and think that they're speaking for God as opposed to his word here. So anyway, uh, and Solomon now goes on to say, when you make a vow, do not delay repayment. So don't make a vow that you're not going to keep before God. And think about that when confirmation runs around because, you know, we, we ask the kids or adults, it's usually kids, <coughs> pardon me, we ask the kids, you know, you, you know you're going to, you're going to say, you know, I would rather follow, I would rather die than fall away from these things. You're going to say words that affect twice. You're going to promise to use the, uh, the sacrament diligently, um, etc. to be in church and to, you know, confess. And I sit down with them and their parents at some point and say, are you ready to say this? You know, these are deep words. These are heavy words. Um, and many do say it, and many do go off and join other confessions or walk away from the church. And, um, you know, but that's between them and God, not me. But, you know, think about that. We, we don't, excuse me, we don't ask people to say those things lightly. We don't ask them to say those things frequently. Uh, mostly it's God making promises to us that you know darn well he's going to keep. Uh, but when we promise to cling to the gifts that he's given to us, to confess, you know, what he's done for us, uh, you know, it, it becomes 
uh, we, we get weak. I mean, I don't know, granted, there's forgiveness for these things, but still, Solomon here is warning us. It's like, don't make a vow that you're not going to repay. And don't make a vow in haste. Uh, again, that theme is drawn heavily from Proverbs. Our Lord says, you know, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Uh, okay. And then we hear about the vanity of wealth and honor, you know, that if you're, there's nothing wrong with being wealthy. And again, we hear that um, sweet is the sleep of the laborer, uh, hard day's work, and food in your belly, you know, there's peace. Um, but if you love wealth and you love money, you're never going to be satisfied. Um, you're going to be worried about this, that, and the other thing. And then, you know, he reminds us that you came naked, you're going out naked. You're not taking any of this with you. And also, too, you know, that we, we get so wrapped up in our own wealth that we have nothing to, to hand over to our children uh, and those who come after us. Uh, we make bad investments or we waste it all. Uh, and then he ends this, you know, saying, hey, you know, this is what's good. That you eat and drink and find enjoyment in the toil with, the, with which you toil under the sun, the few days that God has given you. And, and again, at the end of this, he says, he will not much remember, that's us, the, the, the days of his life. God knows, and we're under the curse. He knows life is hard. He does, you know, and, and it's funny because God doesn't, there's a lot I could say about the curses and the way we think about them. And we'll save that for another night. But let's just say like this. You know, these are things we do to ourselves. And life becomes so miserable down here. God says, like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Even as you cling to me, as you know, you know what, you're one of mine. And, and you suffer here, knowing the life to come. You know, I'm going to give you work so you can take your mind off of things. Um, and oh, work can be very hard, very stressful at times. Most certainly it can. And then, you know, things to eat and drink. Food, wine. You know, have a glass of wine. And again, we're not advocating advocating alcoholism, but wine is a drink that's mentioned frequently in Scripture, not grape juice, um, actual wine. Again, drunkenness is for, forbidden, but what God is saying, I'm giving you things to take your mind off the harshness of this life, to help you forget. You know, the, And think about that, when we enjoy like a weekend like we did with um, friends and family and a big plate of, you know, piles of food in front of us, and I'm sure there were there was you know, maybe some beer and some wine, stuff like that. You enjoyed yourself and you forgot. You remembered the family and why you love each other and, and the closest that you have and your friends and stuff like that and the bounty that God gives us. And you forgot about work for a few days. In fact, you know, you, granted, you know, of course, I work on Sunday and stuff like that, but you get to see it, like kids in confirmation tonight and even yesterday, people are sort of out of rhythm because we had a long week going on. People look a little more rested, a little tired too, um, you know, going around here and there. But anyway, God says, I want to give you things for your enjoyment, not sinful things. You know, enjoy them. It's okay. You know, because he knows what we do to ourselves. And he knows the curse that we're under. All right, we'll stop there. And now confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for deliverance against temptation and the forces of the evil one. We pray for those who are addicted and despairing, that you would uphold them and keeping them, keeping them ever mindful of your love and your unending forgiveness in Christ our Lord. We pray for the tortured and oppressed, that you would turn the hands of those who commit, commit such, such acts of evil and help those who are being tortured and oppressed for your name's sake to stand firm in their confession. Be with each of us each day as we struggle with the frailty and the fallenness of our human flesh. And keep us mindful of the forgiveness that is ours for the sake of Christ. 
We pray for those who are crying out to you for healing, especially for our sister in Christ, Mary Ann, who is hospitalized as we speak, for Pam, Pat, Luray, Klaus, Ardo, Myron, Dennis, Dave, Dawn, Wayne, Cecil, Aaron, Allison, Allie, Scott, Amy, Don, Fern, Ashley, Joan, Camden, Jason, Bob, Jim, Clint, Beth, Eric, Tom, Paul, Brad, Christy, Jeff, Dylan, Jeremy, Marlis, Anita, Dave, Karen, Sue, Tim, Ron, Bert, Lori, Chris, John, Heather, Don, Liberty, Joe, Phil, Katie, Michelle, and all who cry out to you. Heavenly Father, place your healing hand upon them, keeping them ever mindful of your love and your forgiveness, which is theirs for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord and his victory over death. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, my Heavenly Father. Through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll sing a little bit of hymn 708, Lord Thee I Love With All My Heart. Lord Thee I Love With All My Heart. I pray thee ne'er from me depart, with tender mercy cheer me. Earth has no pleasure I would share, yea, heaven itself were void and bare, if thou, Lord, wert not near me, and should my heart for sorrow break. My trust in thee can nothing shake. Thou art the portion I have sought. Thy precious blood my soul has bought. Lord Jesus Christ, my God and Lord, my God and Lord, forsake me not, I trust thy word. That stands as one of three of 708, Lord, thee I love with all my heart. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. By God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.